Hey everyone, welcome back to my stat component series. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up your stats to uh, basically scale off different type of characters. Uh, so what we're gonna be using is a data asset and then depending on the data asset, we will scale our stats per level based upon whatever set in there. So I'm gonna use three examples where we're gonna have like very standard um, classes such as like a warrior, rogue, and mage. And then we'll have basically something that is strength based, agility based, intelligence based. And then when they level up, they will gain those appropriate stats. Afterwards, I'm going to go into a lot of just reorganization, uh, creating macros and, and functions to clean up a lot of what we have to make it more concise and just cleaner. Uh, so you'll be able to see that process. We're also going to just add notes to things as well as like descriptions. I'm going to be going over that a little because I think that's really important to go over. Uh, it's not really the purpose of this um, series, so you don't really have to watch that portion. However, um, I think it's really useful for everyone, so I think you'd enjoy it. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's get starting our data assets. So what we're going to do, if you haven't created data assets before, don't worry. I'll just kind of go over briefly on what they do, how to structure them. They're pretty simple. So with this, what, what I have in mind is I wanna create a data assets that's basically going to contain the amount of stats I'm going to level up. Uh, you can also include other things into it, like other class data you may want to store. Um, I'm really only doing stats, so I'm not gonna go into like other things, but maybe if you wanted to throw in like what the character model's gonna be or um, like a character's name. So like, obviously, their name's not going to be mage. You'll have, I don't know, well, whatever. Um, it could be Harry Potter. I don't know. Uh, you choose. Uh, so with that, I'm going to just have some simple stuff I can store there, but really you can do a lot more. Um, now let's go into here. Now, one thing is um, generally what I do is when I'm looking for something, I actually just type it most of the time. It just saves me life, my life. Um, what we want to do is we want to create a data asset. Uh, however, uh, we need to first create a primary data asset. So this is, we'll create data assets based upon um, the primary. So kind of think of it as like there's a parent and then there's children. So what we want to do is we'll type in blueprint class. We'll type in data asset. And then from primary data asset, we'll hit select. We're going to call this DA for data asset underscore, and we'll just call this care for character, and then we'll just do um, info. Maybe another underscore just to give it a nice little space. And actually, let's give it a nice separate folder for, we'll do character info, and we'll throw that in there. And then from here, let's open this up. So from here, you do have a event graph. So technically speaking, you could create custom functions for your data asset so that if you end up using it, you can end up calling it later. Uh, you may not understand that fully yet, but we'll get there. But most of the time, what you want to do is you need to set up the framework of what you want to store. So usually you're just going to go into the variables and we'll do that. So for example, if we want the data asset to have a name, so we could go um, uh, class name, Let's change this to a string. We'll add something else. We'll just do with like character name. Leave it as a string. And then from here, we want to have the stats. So this is going to be uh, level up stats or sorry, attributes. We renamed it. So upon leveling up, we want to be able to have what stats are going to level up with whatever amounts. Uh, you could use this for the strength, agility, and intelligence. Uh, we're not going to be using it for XP because we got a data table for that. You could also do this type of information in the data table as well. Uh, however, I wanted to do a data asset just to kind of showcase the usage, and I do like to use them as well. And it doesn't require you to search through a data table. So it can save you some time based upon your usages. Uh, you just gotta know about how to do it. So what we need to do is we wanna be able to store the, the stats, but we need to know what type of 
variable it needs. So if you actually went to our attribute, if you don't remember, I mean, I remember, but just to showcase what it was is it's a map of attributes and float. You can go into here as well as just changing all of them, or you can do the simple way of just doing control C and then control V and you can copy it there. So that can actually save yourself some time as well. It's really small. If you just want to type it out, click it, that's fine too. Anyways, let's change the name level up attributes and we'll hit compile. So this is really all we need to do. I'm not going to go into custom functions, but um, I'll maybe just demonstrate that at the end if I feel like it. So this sets up the basic function. So every data asset that comes from character info will have a class name, character name and level up attributes. Um, if we were to open this up, we show all here. Let's actually just default all these to zero. And then let's get rid of the ones that we don't want here. So we have strength, agility, intelligence. Those are the only ones we want here. Saving that. And then you can actually close that out. We're not going to need to reopen that. Going back over here, let's create a new folder. Call this data oop, underscore assets. And from here, this is where you can type in data, um, data, and you can just get data asset. If you want to find it, it's under miscellaneous data asset. Click here. From here, we want to now search for the primary that we created. Uh, so you can look for other data assets that are available here. Uh, for me, it's the DA character info. Hit select. We'll do the same naming, naming convention, DA, and we'll call this warrior for our first class. And then let's control D to create two copies. And we'll name this one DA underscore mage. And this one we'll do underscore rogue. And with that, we have three classes. If we open one up, so this is our mage, we'll notice that we have the class name, the character name, and then level up attributes. I put these mainly as just a demonstrated demonstration of what you can include, but really we're only going to be using level up attributes because like I said, we're focusing on stats. Uh, class name, obviously this is going to be a mage. For whatever name you want, you could put anything. Um, um, I'll put Appa. <laughs> And then for level up attributes, now this is what we're gonna be using. So every time that we level up, instead of using a data table, we'll say we're gonna be leveling up using these stats. So I'm going to have all of my classes level up and gain a total of, let's say six stats per level. So every time they level up, they'll distribute six stats accordingly. Uh, so for this, let's just go with uh, four, one, and one. So the mage is just very heavy intelligence. And if we open up our rogue, we'll notice we have the same thing. So we could do the same thing. We'll just do that rogue. And um, I don't I don't even know. I, I should have thought through the character names a, a bit more. Um, we'll just call this Misty. And since we're distributing six, let's go two, three, what was that five, and then one. And then we can close those. Let's open up our warrior. And for this, let's just do the opposite where it's just 411. We'll name warrior. And we'll call this guy brick. Let me actually shrink that. Because okay. So with that, we created the three data assets. And now all we need to do is we have to be able to use the data assets. So within our stat system. We're going to add another variable here. Uh, let's name this. Um, we'll just do care info. And then you can actually search for your data asset. So DA care info. We're going to use object. And then from here, hit compile. And you can actually hit the select. Obviously, for your stat system, you're going to want this to have no default value. but what we can do is in the character, if we were to open them up, now if we go to our system, we see care info is shown here and you can select. So for, 
there's multiple different ways that you can set the data asset. However, um, if you have different characters that are like child blueprints of the parent, you'd be able to set all of these data assets individually. So for example, if I were to create a child and we'll name this BP mage, if we were to open up the mage, we can then set the data asset to mage. And just like that, you'd be able to do that for all your characters. Now this does depend on how your character system's set up. Maybe you want to not do that. And let's just say under your construction script, you wanted to, um, let's grab this uh, data. Oh, what's it called? Sorry. Care info get, um, do a validated get. So from here, let's say you wanted to see what you have available in this data asset. And then actually, no, scratch that, scratch that. Uh, I may edit that out. <laughs> so let's say you wanted to do, let's grab that and do set air info. And then upon the beginning of the game, you would set this to something. So whether it is mage or whatever, you would have to get a stored variable to plug that in. So maybe upon creation, you'd be able to set this data asset. Uh, there's, there's lots of different ways. It really depends on how you create your characters. Um, I am going to do it very, very simple where I'm actually just going to set it within the character because let's say I created um, a mage character, um, not an all in one where you can use it for every character. And then you'd be able to just set it accordingly. Um, actually, let's just use warrior. I don't know why we, we can be brick today. Okay, so that's for setting the data asset. Now, the next thing is upon leveling up we want to make sure that we are using those stats. As of right now, if we went to our level up, we're showing that we have this really, really long function. If I zoom out for here, that's covering everything. And that's one of the things I wanted to fix is because honestly, it's, it's just too long and uh, it could be a lot cleaner. So from the start, we don't need our stats list to have strength, agility, intelligence anymore. So this data table that we have, we can eliminate strength, agility, intelligence, because we're now gonna be using um, here, if we were to grab off, uh, attributes, uh, find, and we can actually grab our strength. Of course, I'm not going to do it like this. We'll create a function to make this nice and neat that we can reproduce like we did with this uh, attribute value. Uh, so I'll be able to go through that, but first we want to clean up this a little because we don't need this to be showing all of these stats. So actually I'm going to delete this. And then we're going to delete all of these add attributes because we're going to be doing it differently now. And from here, uh, I guess we could just plug in in the meantime, just in case we need to edit this list. So let's go back to our stat system. Let's go back to our stats list and let's actually just delete, 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 delete. And now that we have in fact deleted it, the next thing that we need to do is we should rename it because this no longer actually applies to stats. It's literally just a table used for our XP. Because if we went back into our data table, you'll notice all we have is level and max XP. So we're just using it for leveling. So let's go into here. We'll rename this instead of stats list. Let's just name this XP list. And we're wait for that. All right. And from here, we'll be able to let's actually create a I'm going to create a folder just for structs. Because part of this is to reorganize and show you how to go about doing that. We're going to put structs over here, which also means we're going to see some saving. Mm -hmm. We'll move that as well, though. Um, I actually have a better solution for stats multiplier. So we're going to actually be doing that as well. And then we'll do an enums folder. 
we'll plug that in as well. All right, okay. So we fixed that. So now this will only show the one, which is all that we really need it for. Um, maybe I can condense this a little. Okay. And we'll bring that back over here. Okay. So from here, what we want to do is we want to be able to find the level up attributes. So this is what contains all of the attributes that we're going to gain upon leveling up that we set within the data asset. So if I was to open that back up, let's just have that on the side just in case. We'll notice that when we level up, we're gonna gain four strength, one agility, and one intelligence. So we need to be able to find that and then we need to add that to our current value. Uh, so from there, we would need to do, I wonder if we can do this. Let's add attribute value. Yeah, you can, okay, cool. And then from here, you would have to then select, okay, now we need to do strength. Of course, doing this three times is just gonna give us a repeat of what we just did. So let's actually, we're going to condense this to a macro. And we're gonna call this level up attribute. So now we have this little tiny thing and it doesn't do anything yet. But if you open it up, you'll notice that we have all of this and it still exists. And let me move this aside a little. And for macros, you actually can just drag and pull these in and it'll add the nodes just like so. Let me straighten it out and we'll plug that in. And what we'll do is we're gonna be using the exact same attribute that we're gaining. So since we copy and pasted the same exact attribute, you can actually just plug this in and you can plug that in. And like that, we have a nice little macro that we can add attributes uh, for all three of our stats. We just have to set it a little bit. So from here, um, oh, that's weird. Usually there's like a drop down list. Wait, hold on. Maybe the attributes. Oh yeah, see, okay, there it is. Okay, that was weird. Not sure why it was doing that. Um, that's fine. You just have to manually do it, I guess, instead of... Uh... Anywho, if you manually add it, then it gives you the list where you can feed an input. Because now if we were to like drag off, oh, you can't do that in the same thing. But like here, well, we have the level up attribute. Now we end up showing that, hey, we have level up and we could just do strength. Agility. And intelligence. So we could do that. And then after we have the update stats, and another thing I actually want to do is to condense this even further is I'm actually going to highlight all of this and I'm going to collapse this to a function and we'll name this level up all or let me level all attributes. And if we move that over here and move that over here. By opening this up, let me clean this up a lot because that's weird. Okay. So now we have macros that help us level up the attribute that we so choose. And then we have a function that will just level up all of the attributes um, from the start. And then it goes into updating all the stats, which we have over here, which it's updating strength, agility, and intelligence. And then by updating, hmm, Updating the strength, we do all of this, blah, blah, blah. And that's actually something that I wanna clean up as well, but let's uh, get into that after I have actually fixed all of this with the stats. 
So I guess the important thing is we want to check to make sure that what we just created is actually working. So let's, for starters, go into our character. Because one thing that I also noticed is that the defaults, um, hold on, we should change these to zero. And I'll get into how we can set the defaults, um, or you can set them yourself if you want. That's completely up to you. But anyways, we'll go into that in a bit. And then let's go into here and let's just make sure that we set the defaults. Um, we'll leave that at one. We'll do zero, zero, zero. And do we have a debug for gaining a level? I think we do. It may just be in here, maybe. Oh, this is so disgusting. I forgot that we did this. Um, we made a UI, and we shouldn't need that anymore. Let me copy that. And paste. Hold on, I'm reorganizing because I didn't realize how disgusting this looked right now. And then we'll do debug key three. And then we'll just do print add XP. Okay. That should be better. Okay, okay. Let's go into here. We have one that opens up. We'll notice that we have like no stats. Obviously, that's not ideal except for the armor for some reason. Uh, oh, that's because it's the only thing that doesn't scale. Right, right, right. Anyways. We add XP, we should gain a level now. We did, and we'll notice that our strength went up by four, agility went up by one, intelligence went up by one. So we do know that that is in fact the stats that we wanted, because we have four, one, one. Everything is scaling as intentional. And then the rest of this just scales based upon what these three stats are. So perfect, we know that's working, great. Going back into here, now that we know that works, what we also want to do is this update stats function, we actually want to set our starting stats. So let's go into, let's see. I wonder if our level up will work. Let's delete that. Let's, let's try to see first, press one. Yeah, so we have our beginning stats. And I think that's because our current level is one. Yeah, because level one, and then we'll pull max XP, set the max XP based upon that row. And in our data, we were to open up our level, max XP is 100, which means it's setting our max XP, which is great. And then we are also leveling up all of the attributes. And we, like that, we're able to set all of our starting attributes. However, one thing is that, I wonder, should I do a save and load so you can see the stats? You know what? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we don't need to update all stats because our level up actually has it. Um, over this, sorry, so many functions. Update all stats is at the very end. So let's go back to our event graph and I'm gonna do a new function, which is going to check a save game object. And we'll go through that. So that way, when you start up a game, you can just reload your current stats. So we'll go new function. We'll do um, starting attributes. From here, we'll do does save game exist. I haven't created the object yet. We'll get there. And we'll name this just, let's just do, I don't know, slot one. And we'll do branch. And from here, if there a save game doesn't exist, we'll just set the stats to level up because we're going to be level one and that's the default. 
and then we're just going to gain a level. So that's exactly what we currently have. This is always going to turn false because right now we have no way to save. And then what we'd want to do is do, let's see, load game from slot. And we'll do stats. And then now we have to create our object because we don't have a save game object yet. So let's go back over here. Um, do I have a system? Now we'll create a new blueprint, save game. And then from here, just like we did with the uh, data asset where we just have a attribute, we're gonna do the same thing for our save game. So we'll go save game attributes, or sorry, save game slot one. Also, I realized I put stats instead of slot one. Always make sure the save game slot and stuff is all the same, uh, depending on what you want to open. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste. By default, yeah, we should leave it exactly the same. So from here, if we in fact did have a save game slot, uh, there, there's two things that you could do here. For one, you can use a um, blueprint interface. I'm just going to use casting because um, for my save game, I think it's, it's fine. Uh, but you could do blueprint interfaces if you wanted to avoid casting. But we'll do cast to SG slot one we'll get the attributes and all we would do is set our current attributes to here and then from there I'm trying to think we would need to update all of our stats. So I think we would have to do update all stats. Okay. So let's go ahead and do another debug. Let's do debug key four. And then this is, we're gonna save game to slot. Um, oh, wait, let's get, I think I need to do, sorry, not save game to slot. We need to create a save game because we don't have one yet. S create save game object. We'll do SG slot. And then from here, we're going to set attributes. And we're going to plug that in. So what we're doing is, uh, because we don't have a slot yet, we are creating one. And then we are taking the variable inside the save game and we're setting it to whatever our current stats are. So whenever we save, we'll pass along our current stats and then we can load it up in the next game. So that's all that I'm doing right now. And then from here, we're going to save game to slot. So we're going to save here to here. So the object we created is going to be saved. Let's just clean that up a little. And then we know slot one. Also, you can you can also just promote this to a variable and use that as well. So you could just have the SG name. And then I can actually go back to the other functions. I know I'm jumping around a lot, but that's because I'm doing a, a bit. So from here, we can just plug this in and plug that in. That way it's just consistent. So no matter what, no typo errors. All right, and then just to let us know that we actually in fact pressed the button, let's just do print and do save attributes. So what I wanna do to test this is we're gonna gain some levels and then we're gonna save it. So from level one, we have our basic stats, awesome. 
That's perfect. Let's gain some stats. All right, I'm level five now. We notice I have all my stats. Let me close that and on the top left, I'm gonna hit four. We saved them. Let's exit out of the game. Open that up. All right, it looks like our stats did not update. So it looks like something happened where it's saved to slot one. But our starting attribute function did not, in fact, work. So let's see. Uh, load game from slot. I wonder if it's because I didn't create Hmm. Let's let's try this. Create. Well, no, I don't think I should need to. Okay, maybe I should. Create save game object. Does save game exist? This feels wrong. No, this feels wrong. That's not the solution. If save game exists, we're going to load a save game from slot, which slot one, slot one. And then from here, we set the attributes. Um, Maybe I should change it to a different. Let's go into slot one. Let's change the name to like slot attributes to not confuse myself. And we'll delete. Oh, wait. We don't need to delete anything. Um, OK, Let's try that again. Hit one. We have all of that. Gained XP. We saved it. So I'm level four right now in the save slot. We go into here, press one, nothing is loading. Okay. Um, let's see. Starting attributes. We go to the event graph. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why. There we go. OK. Yep, I'm just uh, super smart. Left off the event. But we notice that we're level four. We have all our stats. We're doing great. Uh, if I close this out, let's gain some XP. Level six now. I hit save. We go in here, press one. And we're still level six. So just like that, we have all of our stats. They are saving. Perfect. So we do have all of that working. Now let's uh, let's do some cleaning up. So I want to actually clean up a lot of this and that's with all of the stats. <clears throat> so let's um, delete that. I want to clean up, let's see, all of this really. And I think there's some macros that I helped create, um, but I, I did some modifications to them. So with that, let's, let's do this. Let's collapse this to a macro. We'll name this scale stats. Let's open that up. From here, what we're going to want to do is very similar towards the other level up macro where we have over here, where we just plug in. We're going to be doing the same thing. Uh, we're going to create this. We'll name this um, select. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Mm. Attribute? OK, 
Okay. And from here, you'll notice that we no longer have our stats, so I kind of broke everything else. That was actually intentional because I want to change this. So instead of using um, the stat multiplier, we are actually going to delete that. You can delete that altogether. Yes, we don't need this anymore. We're going to go into structs and we're going to delete it. Fully intentional. I don't want it anymore. It closed out that. That's fine. And the solution I'm actually going to use is that instead, I am going to use a copy of this variable. So I'm going to control C, control V. You can also just do control D, whatever you want to do. And from here, we're just going to do this as multiplier stats. All right, once again, suffering from Unreal Engine crashes, but nonetheless, uh, what I want to do is we're going to control D this again, and we'll do multiplier stats. Now our multiplier should be the same for hmm, everyone. I mean, everyone scales exactly the same. So this is just where you would set the scaling. Uh, so like we did before, uh, we'll just set it to, um, uh, we don't need health and we don't need mana because we're not scaling that. And then we're also not scaling armor. So we'll be able to do that. We'll do 50, 25, and then we'll do 0 0.1. And then attack, we'll just do like two. All right. And then just like our stats, we'll be able to control what stats that we're going to multiply with. So we'll go into here. We want to find the stat that we're going to scale. Uh, so let me actually, let's, let's move this down. These two are always going to be the same. So we'll have a select stat instead of select attribute. Select stat. Change this to stat. Uh, let me actually change the order. Drag it over there. Okay. And we'll plug that in. We'll plug that in. Looking good. Um, well, maybe I'll do a pin right here and just bam. Okay. A little cleaner, a little cleaner. And then we have this multiply and we'll just plug it in here and plug it in here. So we'll be able to scale them accordingly. Drag that back. So like that, we'll be able to scale our stats and we can use it for all of them. So going back over here, uh, now you just select. So from up, when we're updating strength, we're going to update our max health with strength. And then we'll be able to do the same thing for attack. So we'll be able to do this based on attack and we'll do agility. And delete. So we'll be able to do that. And then intelligence is gonna be the same thing with mana and mana region. So we do here. And let's go max mana, intelligence. Mana region, intelligence. I'm gonna zoom out a little cause I'm gonna condense all of this. And we'll do here. Condense. And more zooming you probably can't see, but that's fine. Um, you can tell this is a bundle of joy to do. All right, I could have just deleted it and redid it. So we end up having the update all stats where you can scale our stats. That's looking a lot cleaner. Uh, so we were able to condense all of this. Uh, let me see. Mm. And I think one thing we could do is I have an idea where we can utilize this to update specific stats if we ever need to. So let's collapse this to, mm, let's collapse it to a function. 
we'll name this update stats. We actually don't need it here, so we'll delete that. From here, what I have in plan is that we'll be able to choose what stat we want to update. So let's say you added somebody something. Um, you can pass along what stat has been updated. So let's say you specifically only um, added intelligence. You'll be able to call this function and then just add the intelligence. Um, and then we'll also just include an option where we can update all of them like we are doing here. Uh, so by doing that, I'm going to create, oh, autosave, come on now. I should really reduce the timer on that, I swear. Okay, anyways, we go into here. Um, we're gonna name this update all stats. We'll name this boole a boolean. And then from here, we're just gonna do a branch. And then if it's true, we'll just update all our stats. So like in the beginning of the game, we'll update all our stats as intended. Um, the next thing we'll do is I'm gonna do a switch on attributes. And then we'll do another where it'll be select attribute. Attribute. And we'll plug that in. And then upon here, we can just do if it equals the strength, do that. And if it in equals to agility, do that. And if it in equals there. And we can close like that. Ooh, what's going on over here? Um, oh. I don't even know why that's there. I don't even think that's what I put there. Um, that should be starting attributes here. And then from here, delete that and we'll do update stats. Actually, yeah, that should be correct. Let me zoom back in. And then we'll just select the update all stats. And then if you wanted to update a specific one, you can actually pass along like which whichever one you want to. Uh, later on, I think this will be pretty useful or it may be useful to one of you if you wanted to uh, like have items and you pass along what attribute they have. Like so if they have intelligence, you pass along. That's what they're updating, whatever it is. Uh, compile looks like we're still failing. Um, okay. And we'll do that again. And I think that kind of condenses a lot. Moving this over. That moved to the slightly. And we'll move this over. And we'll move that over. OK. So we were able to condense this hugely. Oh, that's off just by a little and it's bothering me. So sorry um, to focus on the sizing. But now if we take a look at a long scale, look how short it now looks. It's actually a lot better. Um, let's see, is there anything else we can probably condense? Maybe we can condense this. Mm, no, no, that's that's fine. That's actually, I think, going far. And I don't think it's necessary. Um, yeah, OK, two, two, two. Level up. Okay, so with that, I think we did uh, a lot of modifications. We learned how to add different characters. You can just create different type of data assets. I also showed you how to do data assets. Uh, so I hope you learned from this. I hope you got some organizations. I know I didn't go into descriptions, but because this video is getting a bit longer, um, so I didn't really focus on that, but I promise to go over that in another video. Uh, we'll get there, but um, hopefully you see the purpose in how you can create functions and make it a lot more organized um, and not a chaotic mess. So I hope that was very useful. So feel free to hit the subscribe, like, comment, join Discord, all the self promo stuff. It's great having you guys. See you next time.